I want to start with an appetizer. Obviously, we're going to talk about games that you should know by heart, and you're not going to regret it. So, I'm happy to see familiar faces, but today's menu will start with an appetizer, and the second will be the main course, which will feature a Denon now, although a reverse, a reverse Denon now, namely a game by Komsky and none other than Bobby Fischer. Let's get started. So this game is, is a puzzle. I'll flip the board. And it's known, if you realize it, that Johannes Berg, Koch's sister, which uh, wouldn't fit on the screen, is not an actual name. It's a pro chess league team fighting against Norway gnomes. Because recently, um, instead of the US Chess League, now we have Pro Chess League. So I decided to bring some appetizers and some little puzzles from those um, matches. And I would invite um, the audience and you um, who watch, watches, to find the solution right here. So I'm going to give four examples of this Pro Chess League and four highlight puzzles from that event. This one was played, um, I'm not sure who White was, but I know that the player from Norway Gnomes was none other than Hammer, not MC Hammer, uh, but the second of Magnus Carlsen, and he is well known to win sometimes. And this was the same occasion. He didn't find the winning move, but I'm sure the audience here, who I see many familiar faces, um, can tell me what the solution might be. Black to move and win. It's noticeable that the white king is kind of stuck in the corner. So that might have to do something with the solution. Uh, what's the idea? You said that rook takes f3? Um, eventually, queen takes. Mm -hmm. you did that for shots and queens, mm -hmm. but you can't force the queen to take queen b1. Mm -hmm. With the idea of? Um, just like before. Mm -hmm. And what solutions you see for white? How could he defend against bishop e4? Yeah, he has none. He solved it. Um, rook takes f3 as suggested by the audience, young member at, on the audience, is a brilliant idea that MC, I mean, sorry, Hammer missed. And queen takes f3, queen b1. And even though white would like to run, he just cannot hide and bishop e4, as let's say knight would play f, knight f4, bishop e4. And it's goodbye time for white as the queen has lost. Other solution I saw was maybe queen e5 with an option. And if knight f4, then the same idea of bishop e4. And that's winning. But uh, M I mean, Hammer won the game anyways. But this would have been a nice finish. So also, there was this game played by the New Jersey Knockouts versus the Montclair Sopranos. And Black seemingly has an overwhelming advantage as he has a strong passer and also the chance of winning a whole rook. But uh, what actually White didn't see, that he's not lost. What could have the New Jersey knockouts play here and would have actually changed the final result of the match 
that was really close and was won by Montclair Sopranos. Black is lost. Dead lost, not just lost. In any position where you're looking for tactics, always look for something called mate. And even though it might not be apparent, at the first look, it's always a good idea to imagine if I would, if I could just put a rook there, maybe that would be a mate on the board. So first try to imagine it, dear viewer, and uh, then you might actually find a solution. Rook H4, yes, that's an idea, and where's the other place you could put it? Rook H4 would run into Queen D5 check, unfortunately. Oh, how about so, G6? Rook G6, again, check on D5. And actually, uh, rook, rook G6, G5. yes, rook, rook G5, yeah. actually, this would allow a beautiful tactic by black. It's black to move. Th thank you for the suggestion, because now black would have a wonderful tactical idea. Obviously, rook takes F2 wins at the, in the spot, so I apologize. But queen takes G2 is an interesting idea, as if queen takes, then rook F1 check, and queen G1 Rook takes g1, and this is winning for black. And there's no other way to avoid this. So yes, indeed, rook g5 is the move, which is pretty brilliant, because rook takes f2 doesn't work, because it's made in 1. But what if black can't check on d5, because rook takes on d5, and the same mate happens? But what if queen f7? How could white proceed in this position? Mm-hmm. Queen takes. Queen takes. Rook takes. Rook takes. And mates. <laughs> Beautiful mate. Unfortunately, messed by white. So this is the game between Dallas Destiny and Rio Grande Ospreys. So don't forget, these are Pro Chess League teams actually duking it out to make it to the um, playoffs and then it will be uh, just straight matches till one of them qualifies into the finals. So here black is in a troubled situation so what could how could white try and break through? Okay, that's Sorry. first move is was a given, but I'd be happy to see and hear the ideas behind it. So it's obviously rook takes f7. So black has no choice but to take it. How should white proceed in this position? Neutral. Yep, and I check. And black played king e8, but how could white proceed if black plays, for example, king g8? Queen e6? Yeah, queen e6 check. Yeah, king a8 would run to knight f7 and we take your queen. <coughs> king g7. Queen f7. Yeah, queen f7, king h6. Queen takes, queen takes. Then, um, knight check. Knight check. King f5. Rook over, rook f1, check. I, I suspect mate. I, I don't know, maybe it's my sixth sense, but I, I think it's mate and one here. But uh, please. Yeah, bishop h3 mates, and that's a good by kiss from this beautiful bishop on g2. But Rio Grande player didn't go that way. He went king e8 and running for his life, which eventually wasn't saved, but it still was the best try in this position. So how should white continue? Obviously, 
White does need to stay aggressive in this position if he wants to stay afloat and win the game. Yeah, Queen e6 would win a piece, but um, now the Dallas player, who knows that it's his destiny to win this game, he wants to step it up and win at all costs and without any trouble. Queen e6, black would most probably play queen e7 and it will take some time for white to win the game. But um, white found an even stronger move here. Knight to what? Oh, knight to e6, yes. What's the idea? With, oh, he took first, but then knight e6, exactly. What, what's the idea between for knight e6? Attacking the queen. Mm -hmm. And also, yeah, attacking the queen, and also just having a monster knight on e6, that big octopus, as Eric Rosen would say, is just suffocating black and... Bishop takes e6 doesn't work, obviously, because white would just take queen e7 and just takes, takes, bishop takes h8, and white is a bunch of pieces up and should win easily. Instead, black played queen d6, which ran into what move? Bishop takes bishop. Yeah, because queen can black take. Yeah, then knight just, white just forks. And um, white wins immediately, so black had to take the sorry choice of rook a7. In, in these positions, when you won back the material, there's a good, a good point of trying to stabilize the situation. You already gained what you came for, so you might as well stabilize. What kind of move could stabilize white's advantage? Actually, rook f1 was played. But now, why decided to stabilize it? Which, which move? With which move? A stabilizing move. Something that protects our pieces. C4, exactly. A very good move, as unfortunately, queen h4 would run into trouble because black can take, and we would try to give the check, but oh, that rook just takes us. So if Mm, we would try to take back the bishop, that would lead to other problems, namely that they will take the knight. So, c4 is a good stabilizing move, making sure that white is winning. Queen h4 is more adventurous and could lead to trouble. So in this position, just stabilizing the situation is important because it's a team tournament. If you're winning, you're supposed to win it. If you don't win a winning position, that could put a lot of burden on your team. So c4 is exclamation, exclamation, exclamation point. Rook e7, rook f6, queen d7, queen h4, check, king g2. And how can black try to defend till his last breath? Mm -hmm. Yeah, rook f7, and this unfortunately ends because of... So, obviously he had to take, and this was the best move by far, queen f7, but then mates in d8. So, nobody could avoid their destiny in this game. So there, was, there are other regions playing in this tournament. And these regions are not just America. It's the whole world. It's the Pro Chess League and the whole world is playing. So obviously the famous writer was inclined to play. And his name is Gorky. And I don't know why he's a Stormbringer, but uh, it was his choice. So, because the whole world plays, even the nomads are playing in this tournament. So it, here a black player came up with a brilliant solution, which greatly reminded me of 
Souls game versus Rapport. Mind, mind me, Wesley's leading, and he's in the lead uh, in the Tata Steel Chess Tournament. So that's a great result. So it's black to move and find an amazing combination. Who owns the center? Who has more pawns in the center? Black. Black. So, if anyone loves Limb Biscuit, but I don't know if that's the case, we would like to roll it, roll it, roll it. So, I guess to be able to roll it, you need some skateboards. And if you don't have a skateboard, well, just buy one. That's simple. D5 doesn't work because the knight annoyingly takes our pawn on E5. But that's the first step, finding the solution. So D5 doesn't work because of these pieces attacking the E5 pawn. So how can we possibly start rolling our pawns? Rook takes. Exactly. Rook takes C4. Rook takes C4. Bishop takes C4. Bishop takes pawn. Bishop F1. If we are attacking, would we want more exchanges? No, we wouldn't. So what should we play here? Bishop F3? Yeah, Bishop F3 is a good move, but um, black decided to go Bishop B7. And white being from the Schmickend nomads, he started at attacking like crazy. And if you remember, the so vastly rapport game you'll find the move here because it has the same idea that should have been played in that game so that's a hint so black to play and win a6 a6 and what if we want to go a bit more rambo with it Five? Yeah, Rambo, of course Rambo. So whenever we think about <clears throat> pawn pushes and aggressive moves, we should play like Rockport, aggressively, forward, and as far as we can push it. So no, not A6, but A5. So B takes A6 happened in the game, which overlooked something that would have been even be deadly if Rapport would play it or you would play it. It's black to move and Gavonen spielt. Winning for black. Queen A7. Yeah, that's, that's a sneaky check that ends the game immediately. So... White can give away as many pieces as he'd like, but that wouldn't stop the position from being a mate. That question is going both. Yeah. Instead of pawn takes pawn, what about if he does, yeah, what about if he does uh, uh, pawn, he pawn on e5, and then bishop takes pawn, and then he takes a check and push the pawn. Yes, but black would take the pawn, and there's such a big attack going on. Okay, for example, right. for example, just to prove a point, queen d2, queen b6, queen f2, takes, takes, e4. And I promised, I promised everybody that black will start rolling the pawns and will go a4, d5, a5, d4, and wouldn't stop until promotion. So this idea of sacrificing the rook on c4 was actually a sound idea. Even if you check it with Stockfish or any computer, if you check it with any computer, it's still a great idea. I approve. So we marched for appetizers from 
the games of the Pro Chess League. So it's time to have our main meal and main course. And the then and now section starts now. So I want to start with a reverse then and now, namely this game played by Komsky. I've played Komsky, he's a good player, and trust me on that, it was tough playing him. He beat me, but it was fun. It was a fun, long game. So e4 was played, as Komsky played in 2009, against Topalov with the same idea, which we will soon see. This is which opening, if I could ask? Vuy Lopez, yes, the Spanish. And uh, in, in the right hand, it's a Spanish torture. It should be 7, b5, d6. So no, no marshals today, and I guess no marshals tomorrow. d6, c3, castles, d4. And if you know Komsky, and of course you do because you love chess, you'd know what he'd play here. push d5. He likes these uh, strategic positions and d5 is just an open invitation to a good old strategic game. Knight a5, bishop c2, c6, h3, bishop heads back to c8, d takes c6, knight takes c6, knight d2. Where is the white knight headed? f1 and g yeah, to f1 and g3, to knight f1 and knight g3, and actually that's what happened. h6, knight f1, bishop e6, knight g3, rook e8. And Komsky surprisingly knows about, about Alakine and knows that if possible, play on two sides. And that's what he does. So what did Kamsky play here? A4. A4, of course. A4, queen c7, knight h4. And his opponent is playing pretty well because he also knows the basic principles of chess. And figure that, hmm, my opponent is playing on the flanks. Where should I play now? Where should he play now? Center, Center of course. D5. He takes D5. Bishop takes d5, knight h5, rook d8. And now, if you're a grandmaster, and if you're a super grandmaster as Komsky, you would know what move to play here. It's a stone cold move, but it's very cool. What was that? Oh, not, not yet. Well, rooks like open lines, so a takes b5. And before we would go crazy and take on g2, Komsky would point out that after queen e2, he will win a piece. And that's not a good omen against a grandmaster, nor against anybody to be a piece down. So he took back the pawn and thought that, oh, I have a decent position, but this is the moment when lightning struck. What happened? Komsky to move and win. Yeah, bishop takes h6. Bravo, very good. g takes h6, and how should white continue? Mm -hmm. It's not the best. When you're attacking, it's a good idea to bring more and more pieces to the attack. Because it's basic math. If you can outnumber your opponent with your pieces, most likely it's going to be mate. Queen c1? Exactly, queen c1. Brilliant, brilliant move. What's the point behind queen c1? You can't defend the pawn. You're attacking the h pawn. You move the bishop back and still take it down with the knight. Yeah. It, yeah, white decides to keep black 
uncertain. I might take with the queen on h6 or with the knight. I don't know. Maybe. But most likely the problem is for black now that the queen is coming to the attack with full force and there's actually no way to defend. Bishop f8 trying to fend, fend off the attack but that does not deter Komsky from attacking. Knight, knight takes h6 check and if bishop takes h6 king h8 was played but if instead bishop takes h6 queen takes h6 and what happens if rook rook d6 knight f5 and the queen g7 mate is unstoppable and if Rook e6, then there comes a brilliant line, obviously knight f5, knight e8, and again, white to move and just win. Actually, not just win, mate. 97. 97. If I take with the queen, how am I mated? Yeah, queen h7. King f8, queen h8, mate. The others, square, so not knight f5, but knight h5, actually putting so much pressure on f6 that this poor knight cannot defend g8 any longer, because bishop takes h6, would just lose to queen takes h6, knight d8, knight takes f6, rook takes f6, but this is queen g8, mate. So this is a game you should know by heart by Komsky. And the final game was by the player known as Bobby Fischer. I think that's not anything new. Bobby Fischer played this um, <clears throat> tour in America in 1964 and then played this game against Cella. It's obviously not his most famous game, but I still enjoyed watching this one. Knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5. And if we know that Bobby Fischer is an ambitious player, what would an ambitious player play in this position? Oh, bishop takes f7 is a bit too aggressive. Fischer is more conservative than that. Yeah? B4, yes. Who wouldn't love the evens gambit? Well, actually, Fisher loved the evens gambit and was planning to play it more. But instead of him, Kasparov adopted it and won plentiful games, like against Pickett and Donand. Check those out. They're great. Bishop b4, c3, bishop e7. And how should white continue? d4, obviously. So here, the right move is knight a5, knight a5, but black played d6, d takes e5, knight takes e5, knight takes e5, d takes e5, and now a move that usually never wins you a game will win a game for Fisher. That's how good he is. What move did Fisher played here? that would never work for anyone else. Almost. Bishop takes f7 doesn't even work for Fisher. Fisher. Okay. I'm sorry to say that. Queen h5, Queen h5 yes. Because the bishop is so awkwardly placed on e7 that the f7 pawn is hard to defend. So Cella played g6, queen takes e5, knight f6. And Fisher knows a lot about chess. He knows you have to hit the iron till, it, till it's warm. I mean, when it's warm. So what did he play here? No, not, not bishop g5. Yeah. 
Black is about to castle. We wouldn't want that. That would make for a long game. Yeah, that's one way. But he, did, he didn't play bishop h6. He did the other way around. So he played bishop a3. King f8 would run into something that would hurt a lot. That's namely queen takes f6, and you can't take the queen. So rook f8 was played. Castles. Knight g4. Queen g3. Takes. Takes. Queen e7. And I don't know how big of a fan Bobby Fischer was of basketball, but he knew how to bring new pieces into play. And he did that superbly. And this move just introduces a new player in the, on the bench. And that is bishop b5 check. c6, and what was the idea of Fisher? In these positions, material doesn't count as much as usual. Here it's good to do something I always call abstract logic. When you're Ahead in development, it's much more important to attack, if you can, um, than to protect the pieces. So if you're an attacking player and you're way ahead of development, just put your pieces to the most optimal places, and then we'll, you will win the game. Rook d1, that's a good idea. But unfortunately, the knight is hanging on a3. Knight a3 to c4. Yeah, knight a3 to c4. Yes, that's what Fisher played. Queen e6, rook d1. Exactly, the idea was good. Just you have to first bring in the killer beast, the knight, into the game. So if he had and taken a bishop instead of moving the queen? Then if the pawn takes b5, the knight d6 check, king d8. And then, as we talked about abstract logic, it's not the number of the pieces, but the activity of the pieces that counts, and rook d1. And bishop d7, knight takes, king c8, knight d6, and king b8, you just go and play either rook d5 or rook d4, and you just have overwhelming compensation. As the rook on a8 is very bad, and white's pieces are really active. So in this position, have to complement black for finding queen e6, which gives a little space for the king, so he could ru run away from the knight d6 checks. So rook d1, c takes b5. And how did Fisher continue? Knight d6 check, then the king just goes to e7. Knight d6 check, okay. Knight d6 check, just king e7. So rook, rook d6? Rook d6 would just lose the knight on c4, unfortunately. When you're attacking, bring an extra piece into the attack. That's always a good idea. Yeah, queen c7. Queen c7, bishop d7. Knight d6 check, king e7. And Fisher knows that rooks work best on open files, yes. So how did Bobby find the right solution here? Rook fe1 is a little bit slow, but the idea is similar. Knight f5? Yes, knight f5. Takes, takes. And what's the idea behind knight f5? Mm -hmm, exactly. So queen e5 would immediately run into rook e1, and we'd say goodbye, queen. But obviously, black didn't want to lose like that, so he played rook c8, 
counterattacking. Now, Check. Yes, rook takes, queen takes, rook e1. Oh no, not even rook e1. Rook e1 actually was Fisher's original intention. But then he recalled Emmanuel Lasker and he said, if you see a good move, there must be an even better one. So here, Fisher even played. A strong, even stronger move than that. Mm -hmm. With the idea of f6, with the idea. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's what happened. F f6, brilliant idea. Knight f6, and now, yeah, rook e1, check, and now this is even better. Rook takes e4, king f6, queen takes rook fd8, queen g4, and we know how much, how precise Fisher wanted to be all the time. He loved this game and uh, mentioned this and talked about this game in his 60 memorable games. And in this position, he played queen g4. But as a self-critical person, he mentioned that I should have found queen e7 check that is winning much, much quicker. Um, but apparently, he said, I forgot my king f5, king f4, queen g5 mate. He forgot that Emmanuel Lasker said the same thing again, that even if you find a good move, it's always possible to find the best one. And therefore, this would have been a brilliant mate, but queen g4 was also winning, and this was Fisher's brilliancy. Thank you.